Hey guys, I'm Simon Toskin and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. This game is turning out to be a lot more in depth than the original one for sure. Like the first one I did in like uh, maybe two episodes and got all the endings. This one I'm like, I'm still going through the wrong door and getting things. And the last one we had the confusion ending, which was probably the most interesting so far, for sure. Like it was, like the whole episode was in, like he went down the bottom and he restarts, but then it like, it's like, I thought it actually restart, and, like, the whole thing is just its own, like, 15-minute story. So, anyway, I think it really restart this time, and we are going to go through the wrong door again. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And the only thing we have left to do on this okay. side... It was okay. It was okay. ...is to go but through this eager door... to get back to business... Stanley took the first all the way open across, door on his left. Should or should not. And really so he detoured through the maintenance section, anything. walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. So this is back on track. Let me see. Don't let me go back out. It won't. So this could affect this direction in some way. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay. Sergis. Monetize free to play. Ha! <laughs> this is. <laughs> they, they had their. F okay. Yeah. Oh, there's up and down. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, so I have a choice to go up or down. We are going to. Go down, because we are in the business of doing things wrong. All right. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence nope. in a single moment for no reason at all. I'm in a loop. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float oh. above the ground. Oh. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, 
He knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? Yeah, voice. This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> that was an old ending from the original. But definitely a, uh, <laughs> a different way to get there. All of his co-workers were gone. Yeah. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Yeah, Perhaps he had uh... simply missed a memo. <laughs> I always like it had different music in the old one. I actually remember liking the music a lot. When Stanley so came to the a right set of two open the doors, door. he entered the door on his left. Yep, I did it. We're going the correct way for once. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hope coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his All boss's office. Alright, so office. I guess we're going the correct way this time. No, we might as well do everything he tells me this time. This is different. Executive bathroom. Did I say that on the first episode when we came in? Is the panda still up on the wall? No. Stepping into his manager's office, huh. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, 
knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, this is what he was going to do instead. See if he gets mad about it. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. <laughs> Come on, get mad about it. Do something. 2845. <laughs> Come on. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, <laughs> and the door just opened all by itself. <laughs> and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got in there, man. I wonder if that's going to affect you. You never know. Loading, loading, loading. I wonder how long this part is. I remember how the old one happened. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. There's an escape. Let's save it. And let's take the escape. Forget it, we're out of here. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh, really? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. What's going to happen? Oh, this is too. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, it reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. <laughs> and yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Hmm. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, 
Death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Hmm. Nature paintings. The doors. All this. Button sounds. <laughs> Yay! Try it all out. Huh. And there's credits. Office clock. Boss's office, there are three boss offices? Development of boss's office, okay. There's a lot of things to see around here. Underground. Now using the, year, the game. It's pretty cool. What else can we see in here? Stuff up there. Let me go over this side. See what this is. The war zone. I haven't done this. In our development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up fighting aliens. The action would become the wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it, it was too far jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some of the people interpret it as making fun of people who like shooters, which is not our intention. Yeah, right. Am I going crazy? Maybe it's the same clock there. I don't remember how I got... Can you click it for me? Check it for me. Larger. Wait. HDR mix is to lose. The point of Stanley Parable HDR mix is to win. What? What's that say? Are you a rock? Are these emails? What are these? Narrator emails. <laughs> okay. The lounge. Apartment timer. What happens when it gets to zero? Starts over. Okay. Woo. This is maintenance layout. Obey, disobey. Huh. It's just a bunch of stuff. Originally part of the Zinning player would you never know, describe what color it pulled. Model. The game is now paused, begin the game result. Okay. Ah There's the exit. Okay. So many th things. Just gotta make sure I've seen it all. I think I have, though. Okay, so let's go to the exit now. Get out of here. That's a, a large area just from trying to escape. Exit! <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. 
You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... And I think we're dead. <laughs> oh, that was a neat ending. That was, like I said, that was a, an older one. They kind of redid it, though. It was interesting. I don't think there's... I think if you press escape and restart, it just restarts normally. That's, I'm pretty sure that's what did the old one. I can't imagine it doing anything else. Like, it usually restarts for you. If it's going to do anything crazy. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I guess there's only really one thing left to do. And that is to actually go into the room it's trying to get us to go into the whole time. And so we'll do that next time. See you then. Stay toasty, my friends.